Hi, passions. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my bed. <laughs> and welcome back to another video. Hi. I'm kind of awake today. Today is a Friday, the 1st of July, and I won't be celebrating no goddamn July 4th, okay? There's nothing to be celebrating July 4th for right, right about now, okay? Memorial Day, yes, July 4th, and call me in the morning. Um, Please do not forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So next time I drop another video, if you want the first to be notified that, hey, I just dropped one, okay? Drop it like it's hot. That's the what I swear. Drop it like it's hot. Drop, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop, drop it like it's hot. So, how are you all doing this lovely, blessed Friday? This is the day that the Lord has made. We must rejoice and we shall be glad in it, no matter what comes our way. Okay? Um guys so much is going on in the world today it is just forgetting it's just um becoming sad depressing i you really have to have faith to not crumble you know i believe that more is to come worse than what is and um we got to be prepared i know the struggle is real my mother used to always say mana plan I got to wipe out, meaning, you know, we have these plans and expectations of ourselves and people in our world and our loved ones, but God is saying, uh -uh, that is not what I want. You know, um, the Bible speaks in Matthew, the Bible tells us about in the last coming days and the last days doesn't mean it's going to happen just like that all at once. It's a um, chain, chain of events leading up to, you know, it's getting hotter and hotter every year, every summer. It's hotter than the year before. And I think it's because we are moving closer to the sun to explode. The Bible tells us the world will be destroyed with fire and brimstone. It also tells us about the many plagues that will fall upon the earth. It tells us that God will call the good ones home first and leave the sinners here to perish. So, um, you know, people always say, oh my God, I've been hearing that the world's going to come to an end since I was a child. Now I'm 50, now I'm 60, now I'm 20, now I'm 13, now I'm 15, and I'm still hearing about it. <laughs> ah, my brother was one of the many, many good ones. And he's gone home. He's not here to live in this wretched sin that we all, we, have, we the sinners have created. Okay? So, get be prepared. Make sure you stock up. Um, keep saying better days ahead, better days ahead. I don't know about that. Especially for you sinners that doesn't have it, that don't have faith, doesn't act accordingly, you don't believe. I don't know what's going to happen to you guys. Judgment day is today. Okay. Your judgment day is today. So, I don't know. I don't know. My two little twigs. I don't know. Y'all better get prayed up. Because more diseases are coming. We thought C-19 was it, huh? We thought the um, home in Virginia was it, huh? <laughs> Oh, y'all just so no, I'm out there in this world and I'm working and I see what sin has done to many. The wages of sin is death, but the gift the gift of God is eternal life. To live by his word is eternal life.
sometimes I, I, I think to myself, if I could go back and erase my many wrongs, my many bad decisions, we don't get do-overs. Our do-over is right now. What are we going to do in this moment moving forward? What are we going to do? We stuck up on water and the world going chaos tomorrow. How long is that water going to last for? You stuck up on food and the world going to chaos tomorrow. How long is that food going to last for? <clears throat> oh, but you die with your face. Um, yeah, I'll do better, you guys. We must do better. We must stand firm on his word. We must give him the praise and the glory because I believe that if collectively, as a whole, as a body of Christ, if everyone in this world was doing the right thing, we will all be okay. We wouldn't be so chaotic. But there's evil in this world. The devil have his army out there that is doing his bidding, creating chaos, confusion, and destruction, and interruption. You know, I'm from Jamaica, and... Um, my neighbor have a flag across there at, at his house. And as I'm speaking, the flag is, I've never seen the flag so torn up. I've never even noticed a damn flag till I'm talking now. And it's like, God is giving me a sign that says it's true. I have never, right outside my window, you can just see the house, see the flag. My windows are just wide open and there's the flag, it's all torn up. Dirty, dingy looking, faded out and ripped to shreds. It's like God is trying to say, yes, Angela, you tell them. They're destroying their country and they're destroying each other and themselves. You know, I'm from Jamaica and um, before I came here, I didn't know about, I didn't know of certain things. I didn't know of racism. I didn't know that the color of our skin mattered, that, um, you're treated differently because you're darker, you know, or you're lighter or you're whiter or you're brighter. I didn't know that. And I'm, well, I'm not going to lie to you. I am glad for the opportunity that I have here in America because I don't think I'll, I would have made it. I think I, I probably would be dead probably in Jamaica long time ago, um, raped many times, probably sex slaved off somewhere, um, you know, honestly, because one of the reasons my mother fought to, to get me here, most importantly, and my sisters was, she was many times men came to her home, threatened to kill her, um, for me, they wanted me because I was light skinned. You know, mother had to hide me multiple times, save my life from God knows what older man. I was a kid, like I, I left Jamaica when I was like 11, 10, 11 years old. And I was like a child, not even 12 years old, not even 10 years old. When old men, older men, 20s, 30s was coming to her house kicking in her door with guns, guns put pointing to her head. Where's your light skin daughter? Where your light skin daughter there? Where the brown one day? Where the brown one day? And in Jamaica, we have like a, call it a tenement yard where multiple people live in this like, um, like fenced in yard. And we all had to use one kitchen and it's called a cold stove. We had to put coal in the stove in order to use it. And under the bottom is where you would open it up like a like a kitchen cupboard like you know and you open up and put the coal down there to use it and it's all used coal and ash ashes many times that's where i had to hide 
that's where I had to have that's where I had to I had to hit my mother tried to you know um I can say thank you Jesus here I am and thank my mother for risking her own life because it could have blown her brains out how many times I've left my home saying I was going to school and as a child I would walk past what we call a gully you know and see dead bodies people just kill you because they don't like you they don't like who you who you done you know slept with last week or you messed with somebody man or you you took someone's money or someone beat you at domino or you stole a man weed or whatever the reason is it just kill you but and just throw your body in the gully that could be my mother many times over and for those reasons i have so much to give god thanks for you know regardless of many situations that i i am going through and continue and will continue to experience in my life um but there are you know any problems that i encounter is problem because of decisions i have made in my life and it's nothing that god purposely did to me is what i've done to myself you know and i hopefully i don't do anything else to myself like um hopefully all my troubles are behind me but huh keep dreaming but um we have to take responsibilities for our actions we have to own up to our wrongdoings we have to see god for who he is and try to and, and know that you know he's brought us through and he can and will bring us through and will continue to bring us through as long as we give him the glory as long as we give him the praise and we give him the thanks and remember that without him we wouldn't be here you know Without his grace, his mercy, his love, we would not be here because worse is coming. Worse is coming. And it's not the materialistic things that you have that's going to save you. It's not the food that you've stored up that's going to save you. It's not the water that you've stored that's going to save you. It's not the toilet paper, the toiletries that you've saved up that's going to save you. It's not the paper towel that you've harbored that's going to protect you it's not the man next to you that you love you know it's going to carry you through it's not your children that's going to you know carry you through it's your faith it's your faith okay it's not it's not the, the holding on to yes it's good to know you have a companion right there it's good to know you have a loved one right there beside you you guys are facing it together you're not alone you know it's good to know that you have family around you but believe me they want to be enough that's i don't understand how these young ladies every day can get up and not utter a word or thank god if they say thank you god it's just like a fly by night joke you know just in the moment like i must tell you i've been so tired of lately um that i can't recall the last time i prayed was about full of my knees and i prayed was about three four five nights ago and for me that's a long time that's a long time And I spoke about in in past videos. I I mentioned that um. I even heard Chrissy spoke about it in one of her videos. I told you guys this months ago. China is on lockdown. People are jumping out their windows. You know, China always know. They always know. But we here in America. Our uh, freedomness, freedom of speech, freedom to carry guns, freedom to say whatever we want to say, do what we want to do. We have too much freedom here. And that very same freedom is going to be the destruction of us all. My brother, along with many others, maybe one of you guys, family member, have passed away because of COVID. And I believe that COVID could have been 
handled better, dealt with better, we could have been done with COVID. I believe if people had just listened, cared, and participated. I started wearing a mask for COVID in January of 2021 because, you know, my husband's military and he's always telling me that watch what China does. Whenever, whenever China do something, believe me, we need to be doing the same thing here. You know? And even though people in China, because they're, they're polluted air, they're, they're always wearing a mask. You know, when I heard them start talking, because I started hearing about COVID from Ch China. We weren't talking about COVID when Ch China was speaking on COVID. And I was watching news, news on, on, you know, on what's going on over there. And I decided, you know what? I went to my client's home one day and I was downstairs in his basement, went to his storage room. He keeps a lot of um, products and stuff. And I saw the mask, like a lot. Uh, I, I still have the mask to this day. It's over there on my, on my, um, oh my God, my sink. You know, one of those old fashioned, you know, back in the day surgical mask, like blue with a one little cheap elastic band that goes over the head and that was stapled on, stapled at the side. Yep, I still have it. It's right over there. I found it and um, I started wearing it ever since. I'm the only person when I go to the grocery store, store was wearing a mask. People look at me like I was freaking stupid. Looking at me like I was, like I had no damn sense. Like, what the hell? Why is she wearing a mask? People's eyes are like, huh? I, I did not see anyone around me wearing a mask. I was working out with um, I was working out with one of my, um, you know, employees. We used to start, we started working out together and as soon as we were working out one day and, and the, the, at the gym in my, in my complex and the girl came in and said, they're shutting down the gym ever since then. I stopped going to the gym. I kind of told her, listen, we're done working out because she was a, you know, a young one, free mind, free spirit, just didn't believe in wearing a mask. And I told her, listen, we're done. 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 But, um, I don't know, guys, you know, rough days are ahead and I don't know what y'all gonna do, but I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay prayed up because that's the only damn thing that's gonna help me get through it all. I can only tell a man I can't let a man doing a damn thing. I can only advise a person and I can't make a man doing nothing that I wanna do. I used to always say you can lead a horse to water, not horse. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. When gotta give it foolishness, when a wife so greedy, I'm going back in line two times. <sighs> okay, now I have part two of this. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to like, where's my other phone so I can go ahead and post it. Before I post part three, but anyway, let's get into my story part three. Medusa. Ha 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 ha. Let's get into this. Let's see what Medusa's got to say. By the way, um, I was just listening to something. I listened to TYT and I was just listening to something. They were saying that I don't want to speak on it and, and I'm not quite informed or know what I'm talking about, but the Supreme Court is getting ready to vote on a law that would allow states to, to, to determine elections. Kind of like what Trump started to finish what he started. What if, if this passes, which they're having a vote to pass it, because 
the majority is is um republican so why i think we should pack the court because it's not right what's happening what's going to happen is this i did not believe in packing the courts until every way was overturned and until i'm realizing now what this means i'm like holy shit what this means if this is passed if a republican becomes our next president of the united states a republican will forever be president of the united states i will um talk about this more another time okay when i have more uh, when i can better explain it and it's also funny how all these republic a lot of republican men who voted on this abortion who who's now states are red states and they're saying that you know these um outrageous they, they've now implemented these outrageous laws on abortion and how much they're there 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 are um for abortion and it and they're they want it will be they want it will be way to be overturned almost all of them have had their mistress or mistresses to have abortions um allegedly ivanka trump best friend said at the age of 16 she allegedly accompanied Ivanka to have an abortion. Um, it's just, but they use God has forgiven me. You know, I've been forgiven of my sins. It's funny how people use God when it um when it um favors them, and I use the Lord's name to get when they can get something out of it. Hmm. All right, let's go. to me That is true, Miss Medusa. There is management everywhere. They can look at your daughter no matter what the hell she's wearing, which is why you don't give them even more reason to look. I am not one who believes in a little girl should be dressing like a, an adult, revealing certain parts of her body. I just don't believe. I think, um, I don't think it's appropriate for her. A little girl, age 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, <laughs> to be dressed in, in such a manner, I, I just don't think it's appropriate. So I agree with Christopher. But then Christopher, this is where, you know, you, you your role plays very strong in the beginning of your child's life. You can't just want to fall, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the mother had to bring, change her state to bring her daughter to you for you to start playing daddy. Now I get it, but there are ways to say things. There are ways to there there are ways to address things the appropriate way, you know. Um, 
I, you know, I would have just pulled mommy aside and, you know, say, hey, you know, I know we have our differences and I know I haven't been there, but, you know, I'm here now and she's our daughter. The world is a crazy place. Texas is heavy when it comes to, you know, um, little girls being kidnapped, little boys too, being sex trafficked. You know, and we the world is moving too fast nowadays, and 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 it's hard enough for me to keep to keep up with it, much less our daughter. So I think it's best if we just kind of, you know, slow down with the dressing. Let's do age appropriate, right? Let's make this age appropriate. Um, you know, I will buy, I will take her shopping and buy some things I I, I see fit for her to wear. Um, you know, if you want to come with, you can come with, but you know, given my loose-headed girlfriend at home, you know, I don't want to start no trouble at home, but, um, you know, we can do this together. I can do it alone, preferably, Christopher, with, with the mother. And, you know, there, there's just way to just, you know, do things. And this is why young people shouldn't have children that don't know how to raise, raise kids, because you yourself is an ignorant child mentally your bodies were growing up your dick is a man size but your head you know it's 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 just low life mentality you know just not evolved you just have not evolved into adulthood you know parenthood um but yeah my children until this day, until this day, my 16-year-old daughter acts like a 13-year-old child, okay, with a teenage attitude at times, but smart as hell, okay? She keeps to herself. She doesn't care about friends and fashion and all that. I mean, she doesn't have to worry about it because between her sisters and myself and her oldest brother you know, always keep her up to date you know I mean, this damn child wearing a swimsuit for 100 freaking dollars she's wearing you know sneakers over 200 dollars not my money that her her brother money because he buys her all her sneakers um you know what i make sure that her stomach is covered i make sure that you know um like she was going to a school dance the other day and I took her shopping and her one of her sisters on her dad's side came to join us shopping and she took her to get a send me these pictures of these dresses I'm like what the fuck you think you're doing who whose child are you gonna put in that who which one of your sisters is wearing that dress and I said are you crazy <laughs> uh yes the dress costs way less than the one that I picked out I don't give a damn about the price I care about how my daughter is going to be looked at, okay, and who is looking at her. It's like, hell no, uh-uh. So we got to dress kids age appropriate. We have, we have to. And we have to slow down the growth of kids. Their brain needs to catch up with everything else. She shouldn't be wearing a two-piece at the beach. I think a one-piece is good enough. I'm serious, y'all. I'm 
I agree with that. Like, I, I honestly agree with that. If okay, her phone is broken and I'm not financially able right now to fix the phone. However, you know, if you're wanting to talk to her or needing to talk to her or see a problem with, with, with not being able to talk to her, well, you know, I will bring you the phone and you can take the phone and go get the phone repaired or you can buy her another phone until that happens. Then I will... You know, if you can't do that, if you can't accommodate, then the phone will be fixed when I can afford to fix the phone. I agree with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, guys can be so petty when you leave them behind and they're holding and still holding animosity, you know, and anger because of a breakup. You see, when they leave you behind, when they walk out of your life, they ain't got no problem with that. They ain't got a problem with you. But Christopher behaving like that, it's one of two things, you know, because I, I watched the video already, so I know which, which I'm just like, you know, going through it with y'all. And when Christopher behaves in the way that she, you know, um, is about to share with us, it's one or two things. They're mad at you for leaving. Okay. Or they're trying to prove to the next woman that there's nothing for her to be mad about. Okay. So it seemed to me Christopher have a lot of, um, a lot of undealt with feelings about this, 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 this breakup. If, you know, if if Christopher was over this relationship, over um, Medusa, over whatever they had in the past, and he was just focused on his child, it shouldn't really matter how he communicates to the mother. As long as they're communicating, as long as they're talking about the daughter and what's going on with her, what is her needs, what is the best, what is best for her at this point, how can we, you know, together co-parent to make her life better? Now, I've been gone for a while. I'm over you. You are the past. I have my future here with me. If you're confident in yourself, you're confident in your relationship, it, it shouldn't matter at all how you communicate with your daughter's mother. Okay, you, you should need to hang up the phone and, and call her back. To me, that's just fucking childish. That's just really immature. Um, what, you can't look at me because you're still in love with me? 
You can't look at me because you're still pissed off I left you. You can't look at me for what reason? For what reason you don't want to see my face on a call? That's just not, y'all may think differently. Chris will have no, she doesn't, he doesn't need to look at her and talk to her. Why does he need to see her on FaceTime? He called to FaceTime his daughter, didn't call to FaceTime her. That's true. But if mommy has something to say in the moment of them talking, let her just say it and then hang the phone. I say, okay, cool. But all this immature, childish, juvenile, juvenile ass behavior to me, it's just, just really stupid. It just show a level of immaturity, a level of you still need to go the fuck up. A level of damn, we're not fucking no more. Okay, we're cool. Just, just chill. Okay. It shows that you're over me, but Chris would pretend like he didn't want to get under but Medusa, like like seriously. You know, it's like that guy in school that like, oh God, I went through this so much in school. Oh my God. Oh, this was so freaking annoying. I went through so much of this in school. Like, you know, guys liked me and didn't know how to, how to, um, talking because I'm number one, I'm not popular. I wasn't popular, you know, in, in the beginning of high school, middle school, all through middle school, beginning of high school. Um, this girl from a different country with an accent and, you know, I'm like skinted and, you know, all the popular girls were dark skinted and I didn't know where the fuck I fit in or where I belong because until the white folks decided to snatch me up and kept me in their corner. And, you know, and so why I, you know, but anyhow, uh, they used to remember Sheldon, Sheldon Rucker. Oh my God. And Chris. Oh my goodness. Is his name Chris? I think his name was Chris. I don't fucking remember. But those two guys right there. Oh my God. Should throw things at my head. It, but they used to just tease me, man. Me, my life freaking miserable. Turned out they liked me. But just didn't know how to because. I wasn't, um, I wasn't popular. Yeah. Didn't know how to address, how to approach me. They didn't want anyone to know, but they just had to make me know that they noticed me. Even if it was a negative attention, they had to let me know. I remember when, 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 God, was his name Chris? I think his name was Chris. When he finally, he was the finest freaking boy in school like oh my god he was just freaking gorgeous i remember my gym teacher came out to me and she said you know if you don't um if you don't dress dress out you know for pe you're gonna fail and and i'm gonna fail okay i'm gonna fail 10th grade <laughs> she's like you need to start dressing out for school for for, for pe so i went in the locker room you know went in the locker room and I got dressed, I came out, and I was so, God, I was so shy. I was so freaking shy. I was so shy. Came, I dressed, and I came out, and I sat on the, I passed Chris, I guess his name was Chris. I passed him, and I sat down on the bleachers, like, you know, diagonally, like two rows, no, like one row down from him. And, um... He and I saw him like looking at me. I was coming out of the locker room to sit down, and you know he looks at me and he goes, he slid on down to where I was and slid on over to me. And he was in my ears. Oh my god, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you. He said, "I want to fuck the shit out." Of you. Oh, Y'all, I got up. I walked to the locker room, I got dressed, and I walked right out of PE. <laughs> I had to take summer school that year. I had to. I was like, I am not going back in there. I'm not going back. And I, no, 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 no. I did not go back. Hey, what's his name, Chris? You know, but... I couldn't have believed he said I could not believe he said that to me. Then years later, Sheldon, um, like, you know, 
Like, they're like, they're like years later, months later, Sheldon Rucker. Once I started finding myself in, you know, Sheldon Rucker told me the same thing, how much he had a crush on me. And, but when I did see Chris again, he did, you know, after some we came back to school and all of that, he did apologize to me for, they did not mean to do that. You know, just that he just didn't know how to approach me and I had the most gorgeous legs and this and that and the other and da 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 da. Yeah, but he was the most popular guy in the school. Like every girl wanted to date this guy. And a few years later, a few years ago, I found him on, on Facebook. I still look good. It's all built now. It's got children. I think he wasn't married. So, you know, doing his thing with the girls. But yeah, that's how it is with guys. They still like you. They, they, they show the angry aggression. Like they don't give a fuck, but they know they do. Christopher know he wants it. He wants to, you know, he wants to hit that. He knows that. Positioning. Sorry for that little side note. The way he speaks to me and the way he messages me is very disrespectful and rude. And um, that's partially the reason why I put distance between us. Uh, there's a couple other reasons that I'll get to in just a moment. I want to go back into the messages and kind of go from where you, uh, not where you, but where uh, messages kind of started from the communication started from, uh, from me being out here. Um, I don't feel like I did anything wrong. And I feel like I'm painted out to be this horrible person and is keeping his daughter away from him. And I got receipts. I got facts. I got everything I need. I'm, I move with good intention always. Like, it's never been my motive or, you know, reasoning. Just I want to keep his daughter away from him. That's not what it is. That's, like, been something that's, how do I say it? Like, I used to accept certain things, like him going to stay at La Kenya's with the twins because I wanted him to be a part of his kid's life. Why would I accept that and be understanding of that just to have a child with him and not want him to be not want him to be with her or not want him to be a part of her life like that makes no sense there's a reason there's a part there's like a reason behind it like he's been ooh, in and out of her life since she was born what can i say consistency is key if you can't be consistent what are you doing what no. are you doing Let's get into some messages. Oops. Yeah, she's right. Consistency is key. You can't just be out of this young lady's life for so many years. And all of a sudden, you want to come in and be full-blown on daddy. Like, no. Uh-uh. It don't work like that. I don't think so. No. First, let's be full. Let's, 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 you know, have a, a system here. You know, let's have a. A, a, a conversation here let's lay down some boundaries here let's see what we're gonna you know how we're going to tackle this on so my daughter can you know slowly but surely get to know her um her daddy who left it who who just seemed to have forgotten about her at one point in times many many times in her life
to my messages. I probably should have just tried to do this beforehand. The screenshot is shit. You think? And I was like, okay, so you have to see this as the most is fun. And I'm like, you know, I'm September 9th, 2020. Is the first messages I'm having here, which is her birthday. God, September 9th of 2020? Dang. Hair and nail for 200. What you doing, girl? Are my nails, you know what? Yeah, it could be. Because my nails with tips is about $80, $85. You know, when I do decide to get my my nails done, um, depends on what I'm getting done. It's about $80, $85. But I don't think a 10-year-old little girl should be getting no damn nails on done. A little pedicure, yeah. You know, a little glossy manicure, yeah. But I don't know what nail is going to cost that much. I'm not sure what to do with the hair. Like, are you getting extensions put in the hair? I don't think a little girl, 10 year old, you get no damn extensions. I just don't believe in that. Because we're trying to fast ass our girls before they even hit puberty. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I, I, I don't believe in pushing a child above their age before their age. I just do not believe in that. I believe slow and steady wins the, wins the race. The world is going at such a fast pace nowadays. That our children need to just we just slow it down for them. We should just slow it down for them so don't miss anything. Okay? We're not trying to push them out there to go catch anything. Okay? And have babies for men like Christopher. They're put in a situation like you're in now. I want to wash my child's hair myself because you're white. So I'm pretty, good, pretty sure she's got... That kind of hair, because, honey, this is good hair right here, honey. We can do any damn thing with this. We can press it, perm it, put extension in it, cut that shit. It goes back just like that. This is a good fucking hair, okay? This is a good hair right here, okay? So, <laughs> I know she got that curly shit, wavy shit, you know? So, I would have done just like wash my baby's hair, get me some nice curling gel and stuff and just, you know, get her hair nice and curling, waving. Let that shit flow. But if she wants to get her hair and nails done for 200 and you want to get that 200, girl, you go get that 200. Okay. There's a Walmart everywhere, Christopher. Yeah, Christopher, you sent a hundred. She said two hundred. You have years to make up. You should have gladly, quickly, promptly have sent that two hundred. Okay. And number one, if I'm gonna ask a man for something, I ain't gonna ask for half a shit or you know I could pay how you could pay half and I could pay half. No, I need. I would like for you to send me two hundred dollars to get our daughter hair and nails on for her birthday. Okay. What's this half-ass shit with women and men? What? This must be how they fuck y'all. Half, half, half a sex, right? Damn. Oh, so she still got extensions to it. Okay, September 11th. Okay. Okay. 
talking to this woman like he said that he got a ring on her finger uh -huh. you had a whole week to figure it out chris to confer you had a whole week to figure it out too like you had options nigga you had options you could have won boris jasmine's vehicle to go 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 drive to go see your child since this you're so craving to go see your daughter. You could have rented a vehicle to go see your daughter. You could offer to send money to her mother to not for the mom, but for the daughter to rent a vehicle to come see your child to to, to bring your child to see you. You had options too, nigga. Say what? The What is going on? You, you young peeps. Well, I was once a fool too. So, hey, I guess y'all got to go through y'all growing pains like I went through mine. Oh, my God. I mean, it's bad enough. She done picked up a whole damn life. Okay. Move three hours away. So you can be closer to your child and you can figure out the rest of the way to see your child. Putting it all, always putting it all on the woman. But like, nigga, let me tell you something. I ain't got nothing with you. I'm not here for you. I'm here for my daughter so she can be closer to you. Now, I don't got from way back when to, to way back here and no you can figure it out okay who the fuck you think you're talking to you're no longer sticking up in this okay your child is over her name is jasmine okay so you need to go you need to go talk to her like don't be talking to don't go <laughs> child I'm like, who do you think you're talking to? You're like, you know what? Since your daughter is so important to you, but you don't want to see, why don't you figure it out? I'll be where I'm at. Here's the address of where I'm at. Figure it out. She's doing too much. I feel like your dummy is over there that you wrap up with at night. Okay. Now, that sounds like a man who is so showing concern. When I heard that part, a part of me was like, oh my God, you know, I was kind of touched by that part because I'm thinking like, why can't 
Christopher and men like him behave like that towards the mom at all times. He showed concern. He showed, um, you know, he cared. Like, you're my, my daughter's mother, and I have to be concerned about what's going on with you because you're a mom. She loves you. And, and if you're not here, then she's going to be heartbroken. Be de de she's caring not for her, for the mom, but for the child. But most men cannot separate that. It's not really about the mother, but it's about the child and how the mom being hurt or something negatively being, happening to the mom, how it would affect the child. But most men feel like if they show it, they'll, they, it's, 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 it's about the woman, you know, or the girlfriend that they now have baby with and mining other men's children with, okay? They're going to be jealous and think it's about the woman. But when I heard that part, I was like, you know, why, why can't they just behave like that all the time? Like, why the bickering and the fighting? You can hear actually care and concern in Christopher's voice. Maybe Jasmine wasn't around at that point and he could freely express himself. You know? Maybe he still has some kind of pent-up feeling or some pent-up sperm that he, you know, he's savoring for her. You know what I mean? That he hasn't given to Jasmine yet. <laughs> I don't know. And that's another thing I don't understand. It's like, why did she just bring the baby from wherever they were and all of a sudden, into Jasmine's and um, Christopher's life with their other children, with the other kids. I mean, I just feel like they should have slowly, you know, introduced her to her father, like be with all three of them together at a park. Mom can be sitting on the bench over there and Christopher and his daughter, so what they're playing with. As long as her mom was close by, giving her more of a, a feeling to open up to him. She feels more comfortable. She can, you know, be herself more and be more open to Christopher. Or, you know, Chris would take her out to like dinner or to a park or something. I mean, why he had to whisk her away? She she has no safety net. She feels as if she has no safety net there. Like her comfort zone is her mother. And her mother is not there. She was placed in another car and driven away. For all she known, she for all she knows, she's thinking, "Oh my God, I'm not gonna see my mother again. Where am I going? Everything is just new to her. Everything is scary to her. You know, it's like, it's like I remember taking a story, but long, long not time ago, long time we don't have no nice time. But anyhow, um. My friends and I went to, went to this Jamaican concert and we got a ride to, but didn't, couldn't get a ride from. And we had to hitchhike a ride back home. Finally, my friends, they all did their thing and, and, and couldn't, no one stopped. And they pushed me out. They told me to, you know, show my legs. And I did. And the first car stopped just like that, <laughs> you know, got in the car and, oh, Lord Jesus. We were scared. We were so scared. Even though it was all three of us, all kind of things kept running to our running through our mind. We we're holding on to each other. We were scared. <laughs> Here we are, hitchhike after we've heard horror stories of such a thing. We just wanted to get home. We got to place we had fun we looked you know super fly you know we're dressed to the nines and we don't dance their ass off everybody and um left us we were the only <laughs> four fucking fools outside of the park oh. darkness some fell on us <laughs> drizzle of rain 
you know, damped our, our, you know, vibes and um, cool breeze is coming not to dry us off. And here we are, three freaking fools, four freaking fools, okay? Hitchhiking. Y'all, oh my God, we cried in the back of that car. We prayed in the back of that car. We're like, oh my God, what if he takes us and kills us and rapes us? We were just all kinds of crazy shit. It was when that when that man pulled up. And we just, okay, once we once we saw familiar ground, we were far away from home. Okay. This concert was like way out there. It's happened in Florida. And once we saw that we were um we saw familiar, familiarness, familiar roads and road signs. We saw familiar neighborhoods. We started breathing because I think we're all on our breath the entire fucking way. And then, and now, my cousin Nikki, Nikki, she was a tough one. She was we. Nikki was our like our our our, our fucking badass. You know, she was our bodyguard. She Nikki like everybody for Nikki. Like Nikki was like Don Gagan, you know. <laughs> this shit is so funny. No, no, I'm thinking about it. Nikki was badass. Like everyone in Melrose that knew Nikki, you know, was like, "Oh my God, Nikki's your cousin." I'm like, "Yeah, oh my God." Now nah, she's a big shit now in Florida, you know. So anyhow, um. We're all okay. We're all fine. We're all good until Nikki broke it. <laughs> oh my God. We're all good. We're all great <laughs> until Nikki. <laughs> Nikki was like, What if the mud blood got real queen? What if it take a real and then go fucking go kill me? <laughs> Girl, we were all looking at her like, then we all started crying. We were trying to be quiet so the man driving would not hear us. Because it was just like a little um, two-door car, a little two-door sedan. And we were all clenched up in the back, because four of us we were all clenched up in the back, <laughs> you know, and we were whispering. We were all good. We were all good until Nikki <laughs> broke down. Because <laughs> she was our builder. <laughs> and she was our downfall. <laughs> but, thank God. Here I am. He brought us home. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> class, in fact, Got that car so fast, and then here we go. Thank you so much. Thank you, really appreciate it. Thank you, here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I was like, we know I'm scared. Man, I'm like, you know, let me talk American. He's American. The man was like, I know you guys were scared, but you know, I heard y'all in the back. <laughs> I'm not like that. <laughs> It was like, y'all take care of yourselves. Don't do that again, okay? I'm going to advise you guys. You know, what if I was that kind of person? You know? Man, when we when we heard the man said, I heard y'all in the back. We were like, uh-oh. He said, I understand. I know you guys are scared. So can you imagine that child? Whisk, being whisked away from her mother in a car with who to me is a complete stranger. Okay? And it was only one of her.
So long, Chris wanted to keep that little girl until Wednesday. You know what? I must say, I don't understand why Medusa it was just so I understand that Christopher. Like, has he not been watching Jasmine's videos? Like, have you not seen how dirty Jasmine's house is? Have you not seen what a sh what what a sh shambles Jasmine' life is in? Have you not seen the kind of person Jasmine is? What made you feel so comfortable to just give your daughter to Christopher so we whisk away off to Jasmine's house in her chaotic in her chaotic world in her chaotic mess of a life? Like, how she's always wiping her nose or her hand and placing it where her, she's always sick. Her kids are always sick. I mean, like, what made you feel so comfortable to just die? I couldn't do it. I could not. Christopher would have to be renting a hotel room and me over in the next, in, 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 me renting one right next to him. Okay, and they can spend their time there. Okay, like you're not taking my child to that house. You're not taking my child to that environment. I'm sorry. If you can't afford a hotel room, come visit her for a couple few hours until you're ready to leave. Then goodbye. Uh, Maybe she's not a pick eater. Maybe she saw the nastiness that she was in. Like, oh my God, I can't eat here. I don't blame you. I would have done the same damn thing. It wouldn't have been the next day, but the same damn day. Christopher, yes, you're her father. You do have a say so because her mother has now given you the right to have a say so. Her mother is now allowing you to be a part of your daughter's life, which is a good thing. So, yes, Medusa, Christopher has all right to say what he said however it's the way that he's saying it okay like i said there are ways to different ways to say things um you know and coming at her mother in such a way is completely disrespectful and it can be handled more adult more adultish but you can't do adultish with immature as juvenile delinquents um <clears throat> but christopher you have jasmine over there with your step China, okay, that is, um, you know, um, when she's doing her lives and stuff, okay, their body parts are exposed. So you might want to talk to Jasmine about that too, okay. Since she cares so much about how young girls are displayed on the internet, I mean, they, they are your stepdaughters, so you might want to talk to your um baby mama 
Legendary's mama about how she displays her daughters on the internet. I mean, you've been in their life now for a while, longer than you've been in your daughter's life. Back on my my video. You want some more? Yeah. So you have tournaments coming up. You have two in Kentucky, one in New York. What? So you have two. Chicago, one in Virginia, one in Orlando. Okay, one in Virginia, I'm going to attend. Okay, because I have to go to Virginia, so I'll I'll base that trip around your um tournament. Tell your dad to please send me a schedule. Let me, let me text him right now. Send me a schedule. I have it. Well, send me the schedule, please. Mm. Send me that schedule and um I'm scheduled to work I schedule myself to um be in the field the fourth, the seventh, the ninth, and the tenth. So make sure that is on your agenda. Okay, I've got your itinerary. Thank you very much. And Okay, I'm going to be on the field the 4th, 7th, the 9th, and the 10th. Okay. I'm going to send you my agenda. If you want, I can help pay for the bathing suit bottoms. I need, I need, to I need your help. I already ordered the bathing suit bottoms. I ordered it last night. Bro. Go on. Come on. I ordered it last night. To go to we got practice coming up today. Oh, we got practice. Oh, that's on 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 your foot today, tomorrow, and the other day. You got practice on your ankle. I'm not going until I can't. All right. So you don't forget. Okay, and I want to send this to your stepdad so we can plan to be in Virginia. Says, I'm just a babysitter. I mean, I do want to send time with my daughter. Watcher, I 
I don't know who's being petty here, but I think um, shit's the first being very petty. I mean, you think it's been eight long years. He should just be hop, skipping, and jumping at any opportunity to see his daughter. It just shouldn't. Yes, I realize that him and the mom have it on dealt with issues, and she's calling for her daughter to be watched because she wants to celebrate her birthday. But to me, that would be like, yes, an excuse to see my child, you know, it shouldn't be about, oh, I'm not here to babysit. How can you babysit your own damn child? How can you babysit your, you know, he's looking at, he's, he's thinking about, about the mom. Oh, I'm not going to watch the, our daughter so you can go out and party. It's all about the mother. If he was concerned about his daughter and spending time with his daughter, it will be about his daughter. He would jump at the chance to spend time with his child. I mean, eight years is a eight years is a long damn time. You cannot make up for eight years. You can't. But what you start, what, what, but what he may want to start doing is start, you know, spending time, creating some memories. Okay, trying to make up for lost time. Eight years is gone. You can't get that back. But you can move forward and start creating, you know, a new foundation. So I, I don't know. Once again, the pettiness. He's more concerned about the mother going out and partying like he was concerned about her wearing certain clothing. Like he were concerned about other men talking to her. This is just a way, once again, of still controlling the mother. If I don't watch our, our child, then you can't go out. You know, because I don't understand if your daughter means so much to you, you want to spend so much time with your daughter and you want to be there for her. Why does it bother you for what reason her mom is asking you to be with your child? It shouldn't be a problem. You should jump over hoops and through fire, okay? Through hoops and over fire to watch your child. Do it you as well. So you're saying with all that. So get out. Yeah, I don't know why I'm fitting with my hair so much today. That's because it's like this. I don't know. Christopher is not calling babysitting. Basically calling spending quality time with your child. The availability is, is, is there if you want it. If your child means that much to you. If your daughter is so important to you. Okay. But I think um, whatever Jasmine is thinking. Why does she want you to watch her daughter so she can go out and party? No, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You're not going to go get that girl because her mother can go out and have fun and enjoy herself because I can't, because I choose to stay home. I choose to stay home and not have fun. I just, I just decide to stay home and suffocate my life and be depressed over your dick and, you know, what you're doing, trying to spend, you know, drool over you and, and, and fantasize about you and you marrying me and it will never happen. I just think I do that. Why she just can't stay home? Why she gotta be going out? No, you're not gonna watch her daughter so she can go out. Oh, what a shit show. What a shit show. No. Me, on the other hand, being the other woman, be like, yeah, you know what, babe, go get her. You know, let's just get her for the weekend and, well, let's just plan something and do something with her. No, you haven't. It's been a minute since you've, since you've seen your child. So there's an opportunity. It's here for you to go pick her up. Go pick her up. Um, and Tuesday. Can you make her? Baby said, What you need to set a schedule, let me know. I said, Set a 
Sometimes you can't see her because you don't want to babysit her. It's not really a fuck about how time you can go. So, CRISPR went from, listen, I don't know why you're here, but make your money, be careful, you know, this caring, compassion, uh, expressed person, this, this thoughtful person that was concerned about her safety and reason why she's here and be careful to now fuck you. I don't care what you want to think. I'm not here to fucking babysit. You know, um, let's make a schedule for weekends. You know, Jasmine on her weekend stuff too. I don't know who brought that to whom first, but um, yeah. So he went from that person to now this person. Like, it, it sounded like a man who is sitting right next to his woman. And she is influencing a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Before, she wasn't there when he was expressing care and concern. And I'm thinking Jasmine is probably next to him and he's, you know, lashing out for Jasmine to feel some kind of secure, some, feel secure because of her insecurities. That's just my thoughts on that. Because it sounds like to me a man who's trying to prove that ain't nothing going on with me and her, you know. Um, you ain't got shit to worry about, you know. She's calling, she's saying she wants me to go get the baby, the, go get our daughter, come get our daughter so I can watch her, so she can celebrate her birthday, Jasmine. Not because you don't celebrate your birthday, not because you don't do shit, doesn't mean other people don't do it. Now, because you don't have nobody to call and say, watch my kids, okay? And now, Medusa does. Doesn't mean you gotta be hating, because I guarantee you, Jasmine was a part of that that in that in the middle of that um conversation. And Christopher had to suck up to her feelings to make her feel importante. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe Christopher is just feeling uh he he had something to control the mother with so therefore he used it to control what she wanted to do i don't watch our daughter you can't go out one of the two uh i said that i'm not allowed to have a fucking birthday and call you to take care of your own child now you having a birthday is not Christopher's responsibility, okay? All right, figure it out, girl. Now he ain't gonna watch her. Figure it out. Should have had a plan one before you went to plan B. He said, "Now you want to call? Like I said, let me know when you want to talk about." Or a plan B in case plan one didn't fall through. He said, "We can just let child support figure out the day since you can't help me." He said, "I don't give a fuck." <gasps> now she want to throw in child support. Last conversation, she don't want no child support. She made a promise. She made a promise. She don't go back on her word, but ain't this going back on your word now, girl? Hmm. Now you're threatening child support. But he don't give up. About child support and helping you. I don't know what word that is. Um, so basically, I was just trying to have him watch Paris um, so I could go out and have some fun for my birthday. That's pretty much what that was. His response. Man, listen, if it was such a big deal, you were trying to make sure I'm trying to see what I'm doing with Thank you. 
That takes to fair. You had years to do all that. You had years. You're so financially, mentally, emotionally, and physically support your child and be there for your child when it was convenient for you. Okay? You chose not to. So all of a sudden, it's all, it's all Medusa's, it's all Medusa's fault now. Why all of a sudden, it's all the mama's fault now. The damn one is three hours away from you now. Make it easier and more convenient. And I don't even understand why you made that phone call. So what the mother wants to celebrate her birthday? So what she wants to use you to watch your daughter so she can go out and have fun. You should be like, yeah, bring her over here. If you want to go out and have, want to have fun, bring her over here. I gladly watch my child. It doesn't make sense. To you. That, that doesn't make any when it's convenient for you. She made it so fucking convenient for you. She has been making it very convenient for you. For years. And that's the problem with your woman. You make it too easy for them. And now look how easy it is for them to turn their backs on you. And tell your ass no. Yes. Close the door. I mean, these few and far in between messages and phone calls months later weeks later days later oh but he cares oh he cares i don't understand why is chris so vulgar and disrespectful when he speaks like he's just like i would like he is like that what she said was nothing for him to be so upset about nothing hey, listen and if he said, if he asked, if he, she asked him to watch the daughter and he said, no, respect his no and, and, and go to your, your next best option. Like it shouldn't have been this, this war. Let's make a schedule. You know, let's get the courts involved. No, it's no. Okay. Thank you. Um, what time are we meeting tomorrow? He said it's going to be next weekend. I said, when were you going to tell me this? He said, this is the first time I'm hearing from you. Why would I have to hit you up? I'm thinking that we're going off the last thing that was said. When my daughter was younger, my husband sent me a schedule every year for the year from January to January. Every fucking year. Pick up time, dip. court ordered. So I knew when I had to get her and when I didn't have to get her. Um, and if something came up on my end or his end, we, we need to alter 
make changes to accommodate our unforeseen circumstances. Whatever pops up, we'll then call each other and say, listen, can't make it. Do you want to swap weekends? Da, 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 da. But once we make an arrangement, okay, that was it. That was it. We we made an arrangement. We made an agreement. We're picking Caleb up at this time, that time. It's already set in stone. Okay. He's expecting me. Now, I'm not sure why the mother would have needed to call Christopher and say, okay, are we still on for next weekend? Now, something could have came up and, you know, you forgot, but this is the guy that is so adamant. He's so angry. Let's do a schedule. I will not pick up my daughter when it's convenient for you, but only when it's convenient for me. I will not stoop to your needs, but you will stoop to my wants. And he don't show up. He does not show up. It was to me on this day. Now you work changed or whatever, and you ain't tell me. And it's because this is the first time you're hearing from like, what? You make no sense at all. I don't remember, I'm thinking we're still on schedule that you put in place. Uh, he called us the whole, so December 12th, he texts me, why did you block me from Fat Fat? Uh, so why do you keep calling? And Paris screen is broke, and she says that she doesn't want to go over there. He said, answer the phone. I said, no, I'm not in the mood. What's the matter? It's important. I'm not trying to fly or argue. I said, well, text me. He said, no, I want to talk. You've been ignoring my calls all day. Why? I told you I don't feel good, bruh. I should, I shouldn't even have to explain to you. Text me what's up or just leave me alone. And at this point, I'm pregnant. At the beginning, just finding out I'm pregnant and morning sickness just started kicking in. So yeah, I was not up to listening to what you want to say when I don't feel good. Just text me. I don't want to hear nobody's voice. Like, so, uh, he sends no. He sends me a screenshot. This is when I find out somebody's been pretending to be me on a little YouTube or whatever. Uh, and sends me uh, somebody else messages or something from Instagram or, yeah, it looks like Instagram. Um, he put, if her phone is broken, how come she's still able to post on TikTok? She just uploaded a video six days ago. Uh, because I have a phone. And TikTok on it too. Uh, sends you some more screenshots of me, supposedly me, saying shit. Um, and more. And he says, so this, so say it ain't you, you're lying. Uh, ignore, he called me and we had a phone conversation. I told him, no, that's not me. I, like, Girl, I don't spell my name the way this person spelled my name. It's not how I talk either. I don't type like that. I don't talk like that. Like, do you not know me at all? My like, God, day. Um, that was what day. No, he doesn't know you at all, honey. He just gets into women and get them pregnant and get out their baby's life. That's what he does. December 20th, uh, he said he was going to see what she wants for Christmas. I didn't answer. The inconsistency of these messages. Months later, for a man who wants to be a part of his daughter's life, he come on. <laughs> like, oh my God, Chris. Uh, who are you trying to fool? The 30th, he's like, I haven't talked to my daughter. I've been calling, sending messages, what's going on. Are uh, you going to ever let me talk to my daughter? Yeah, my daughter have a very busy schedule. She has always had a very busy schedule. And, um, you know, there are, and, and my schedule has always been busy, like always been busy. And there are times when, um, before she, she, um, she had a, had a cell phone, you know, 
I will go sometimes a few days without talking to her. But I will always text her father. And like tell Kaylin I love her. I'm thinking about her, but mommy is just so I'm just got a lot going on. Well, and I'll call her dad's phone and, and just even just briefly just say, you know, let me talk to Kaylin. And, you know, say, baby, I love you. Mommy's thinking about you. How was school? How is everything going? You know, but I, I'm always like a week don't pass. Months? <laughs> Weeks? Oh my God. What's up? Mm -mm. It was January 23rd. He's like, what the fuck is up? What's going on? Hello. He did not. December to January. He said... he just... 23rd. I mean, this Negro takes no responsibility for his lack of parenting and his lack of showing care and concern for his child. Everything is a mama's fault. Like I'll be fed up too. Like I don't like listen here. I, you know what? You haven't been here. I've been here on my own. Like, fuck you. When you decide to be consistent and show up, show up and be consistent. Okay. Um, He call, why does he call the kids fat? Fat, fat. Fat boy, fat man. I'm with you and fat. Huh? Not princess. Not baby girl. Not ladybug. Fat, fat. That is such an ugly, unattractive, dis disgusting name to call your child. What is up with you and this fat thing? Because is it because you're fat? You and your lard ass? Like, what is up with that? Oh my God, please, Medusa, stop having to call your damn daughter fat, 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 or fat, fat, whatever the hell it is. Sound like it's a big lard, a lump of, of fat. You've never known what's going on because you haven't been there. Now that she done moved three hours closer, you want to play dada. Dada. Why don't you show up more and call more often and, and take your daughter when she, you know, is being offered to you, to spend time with you, to get to know you, to get to know all about you and your fucked up life over there with Jazz in Plain House. Like, you know, know what I'm saying? Playing victim. Why are you playing victim?
Back and forward, back and forth. Where is it? Back and forth, back and forth. My daughter's up there. Fire! Booyaka, booyaka! Now clear it out, Christopher. Go play with your mother. Our Jasmine front. I go play Monopoly. <laughs> Gerard. I'm trying to be Gerard. I wish there was more Gerards out there. Gerard, yay. I was A plus plus in my book. Nigga, wash your ass. Okay. You should crack at your butt talking about it. do what you gotta do. What you gonna do? You should have been there from day one. Okay. Trying to play that Gerard card. You can't do what Gerard do. You ain't got that kind of money, honey. Damn. You ain't got it like that. Oh, what you want to go get? A power of attorney? Chat, please. Chat, please. It don't work like that, okay? It don't work like that. Obviously, the court's going to be in her favor. Yes, you have rights to your child. But I'm like, you are fucking disrespectful, Christopher disrespectful as hell you have a daughter you have to think about how you're treating her mother okay is that how you want men to treat your daughter like you are so vulgar and so damn disrespectful like this woman is like she's about to fed the fuck up of you okay she's like fed up like yo medusa being too damn nice girl you got the name medusa live up to that shit for me okay You've been too nice, too damn nice, girl. <laughs> nigga, like this is this guy. Nigga had a fucking phone, nigga. Nigga, don't play me like that. Fuck me like a nigga, nigga, nigga. She white. It's just, just no class. It's a, it's a low life, dirty fucking mentality of a man. Just fucking disgusting. Like, my husband call me a nigga. Never. Never, never. Never, never. Was January 23rd with a box on a room with your phone. Stop. He said, stop texting. And you can't tell. I can't talk to my daughter. We don't have nothing to speak on. I'm going to be 
Don't stop texting, please. Always text and follow up with a phone call or call and follow up with a text. When you're in these kind of disputes or you're talking, you deal with business, it's called CYA. Cover your ass. Am I going to threaten you with, with court? Okay? If you're if going to threaten you to bring you to court or if you're dealing with business wise, you always want to go back to the conversation. Per our conversation, oh, this is what I was, this is what we, we discussed and this is what I agreed upon. Should you have any, any objections, please let me know. Okay? I have a, a person I'm doing business with, a company out of New York I'm doing business with, and I communicate with her by text message. And one day she said to me, she called me, she said to me, um, she said to me, you know, I prefer you calling me. I don't, I don't like the texting thing and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't respond well to the text. My phone rang as quickly of a conversation than it is to text. And I can understand that. So what I do from now on, I call her first and I text her afterwards. <laughs> That's what I do. But you're not, because something happened, um, we, we agreed upon a, a price point and I did not follow up. It, it, the, the, the conversation was one of my, me and one of my um, colleagues, um, we're on the phone with her, a three-way call, and we're talking, we're negotiating, negotiating a price point. And she said, okay, it's going to be X, Y, Z because the company's desperate for help. Okay. And I was like, you know, we were like, okay, sounds good. A month later, I noticed that, um, you know, when she, um, I noticed that the numbers wasn't right. was number wasn't adding up. And I called my colleague and I was like, the number's not adding up. You know, I'm like, oh my God. You know, da, 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 da. So I sent her a text and saying numbers not adding up. She then changed her story from what she told us. But because I did not follow up, with a text message, and I did not talk about it in a text message. I had nothing to go back to to say this is what she's, you, this is what we agreed upon. Okay, so long story short, I told her, okay, we'll do it for this amount for now, but starting I think this month or next month, we're going up five dollars more. Okay, and she agreed to that. So if you if if your company cannot pay additional five dollars more then we're out simple as that so always i, I have text messages that i don't throw away like i have texted in my phone from way back when every time i switch my phones over i carry my messages over as well because there are things in here that might come back to bite me in the ass. I need to go back and need to say, this is what was said, this is what was discussed. When you're in a business, when you're doing business with people, it's always best to have things in writing. It always is. Talking over a phone and you hang up, who heard you? They can say, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. But when you have it in writing, coming from their phone to your phone, to your for your eyes to see, Okay, you're good to go. Cover your ass. So I don't think I don't want to hear you. It's not about you right now. It's about Mister G B B D the Madusa girl. Hi. Damn victim, Child, please. How rude. I love you. I love you. I'm 
for children and in a short, doing a TikTok video. Like, we have a full city and out the full I'm going to do so. Let me just say this. <clears throat> Hopefully you're not being bitter because I, you have all right to be upset. You have all right to be angry. You have all right to, to behave and to feel what you're feeling. However, leave the past behind you. Don't let your past dictate your future steps and your future moves. It is hard to see a man behaving in a way or for his woman to display behaviors of him with her children in a way that he has not been for your daughter and he, he, he he's not there for your daughter. And I think with with Christopher, I think he's playing a role for whatever reason that, that suits his narrative, okay? Because if you wanted to be there, Christopher, you would have been there from the word say jump. Okay. Um, it seems like you both of you are holding on to past undealt with feelings. It seems like you both have undealt with issues that you just need to resolve. That you guys need to come together, talk about it, solve it, be adult about it, and start adulting it with your children and co-parent in the best interest for her. Because right about now, both of you guys are all up in your feelings. And that does not play out well for the child because when Christopher pisses you off, the child can't talk to her daddy. He can't reach her. When Christopher, when you, you piss Christopher off, he don't call you for weeks, for months, for days. Because you both are making it about you and your broken relationship. Not about the child. Okay? Christopher is not the kind of daddy that plays daddy consistently, okay? He plays daddy when it's convenient for him, okay? Um, At least he's showing up because they have most men out there that don't show up at all. And when they do show up, they show up fucking empty-handed. At least he's sending you hundred. Most men would send you nothing. He should have sent it all, Okay? Now, they're starting with court thing, and if that's the route he wants to go, well, let him go that route, because believe me, when the courts get done with him, he'll have nothing to give to the other children. He will need to go find another job or two to support himself, that car, I mean, that truck, and his other kids, okay? But believe me, Jasmine will shut out the money or shut out some videos to help him support the other ones. So let him take it to court. Christopher knows he ain't going to take no damn court. The courts will take every thing he's got and give it to you, the mother. He don't want none of that fire. He don't want none of that. Oh, a new subscriber. Southern Sweets. Oh. Yeah, he don't want none of that. Thank you so much, Smith Silver. Yeah. So, um, Chris don't want none of that. He don't want none of that. Chris don't play when it comes to absentee daddy. Okay? So, um, they're going to tell him, listen, you can get your daughter every other weekend. 
and you're going to have to pay quite a few hundreds monthly or weekly or every other week finance the power her. He ain't gonna have shit left in his pocket. Okay? So let him keep talking about the courts. Take take it take him to come. Tell him you're you're ready and waiting, willing and able. Okay? Um yeah, but seriously, you guys need to resolve your issues because it seems like feelings Feelings, oh, feelings, oh, feelings are getting in the way. You guys are getting in the way with all your feelings and with passion. That's it on that. Um, You know, I would say the dressing part with the little girl. Yes, Medusa. Yeah, d dumb it down. Dumb it down. Dumb it down. Christopher. He ain't fooling nobody, child. It's it, and that's that. Y'all got to do better when it comes to co-parenting. You know, the thing is that you guys make it about each other. You break up. The dick you're no longer getting. The, the, the woman who's now with another man, and she ain't with your ass no more because you know what you used to have, and I done lost it. And they probably upset it. Chris probably, Christopher is probably upset at himself because he let Medusa go, and now he's with Jasmine. <laughs> but then you think about the truck he got and the free housing and food that he eats and like, okay, it's worth me sticking around. <laughs> Anyhow, fashions, that's it on that. Oh my God, two damn hours. I hope you all watch this in video in its, in its entirety. If not, it's okay. Thumbs up. If not, it's okay. I'm not for everybody, but thank God I'm my cup of tea. Please do not forget to comment, subscribe, hit that bell. So next time I drop another video, you'll be notified that yo, Beat by Design is in the house. Okay. I hope you guys have a blessed day. I will not be doing the 4th of July this year because I'm. There, what what the fuck am I celebrating? Seriously, gas prices, inflation, Roe v. Wade being overturned, Republicans planning on you know taking over the fucking country to be to be in power forever and a fucking day. What am I celebrating? Seriously, the fact that we're still working for minimum fucking wage. Actually, you know y'all is you know we gotta we gotta we gotta give blood sweat and fucking tears to be able to make to make to, to to pay our bills rent is way more than fucking mortgage we're paying two thousand seventeen hundred fifteen hundred just for a damn three four bedroom apartment gas price has gone up electricity to electricity is gone up congress is only concerned about themselves and their power and their pockets and their wallets and their bank account their vacation homes and their yachts and their freaking now you have Joe Osteen trying to get his congregation to buy him a $64 million fucking jet. Like, I don't know where that came from, but it just came out my damn mom because it's pissing me off. Okay? Like, church ain't church no more. Okay? I mean, women's rights are being tarnished. People are trying to say you have Republicans in Republican state are trying to eliminate, eradicate black history by saying slavery was never slavery. It was an involuntary um, situation. Like the fuck? So that means the new generation are gonna be taught a, a different history. Our history is just, they're trying to erase our history. Like, I, I, Y'all, I'm going to be honest. I'm trying to get rich so I can get the fuck up out of here, okay? I'm looking into different countries to move to because I don't know what's going on over here because these Caucasian people, they are still got hate in their hearts. They still have demonic tendencies in their heart. They're still trying to erase us. 
out of the world. And it doesn't matter if what they conjure up affects them. They don't care. That is just how that is just this is just that is just how evil that they are. They don't care if it affects them or their loved one or whatever. As long as we are gone. So I can talk about this shit for another day. And my husband called me 16 minutes ago. I got to call my husband back. I know that. Anyway, Passion, you guys be safe out there. I know that um, things are changing. Times are changing. We can't go back. And with moving forward, it's going to be a lot of shit in a way. Okay? So set yourself for success today so you can get through tomorrow. And make sure you put God in front of it all. Put him first and above all of it. Because without him, you're going to go fucking crazy. You're going to have a jasmine meltdown. Okay? So, um, and we have passions. Be blessed, be bold, be beautiful. But most importantly, be in love with you. And don't forget to love your Lord. Um, with that said, I love my view. I'm out. Thank you so much for watching and big hugs. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels good. <clears throat> Bye for now.